I'm going to be talking to Ron D. Gregorio. He is the CEO of NetPower, uh, and they're going to build a, a 300 megawatt natural gas power generating plant in Odessa, Texas, that has built in carbon capture and storage. So welcome to the interview, Ron. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mark. I mean, thank you for uh, for having us and your interest in this new phenomenal technology called net power. Well, we're, I'm really interested in this because, of course, um, decarbonizing the power sector is uh, a priority for both Canada and the United States. And there's a lot of natural gas power generation in both countries. And so how they're going to do that, uh, you know, how are they going to what are they going to do with gas plants? Uh, now, can you give us a bit of a, an overview of a brief description of this project? Yeah, thanks. So so I'll start with a brief description of the net power technology itself. Net power is a new kind of power generation engine that combines two novel concepts together uh, uh, in, a, in a patented technology that we're bringing to market in Odessa, Texas as the first commercial unit. And those two novel concepts are this, that when you burn pure oxygen with natural gas, the only product of that combustion is CO2 and water. So we've got that. And then we've got a concept that says, what if we used CO2 itself as the working fluid in a closed loop power generation system such that we would burn natural gas with pure oxygen, generate electricity, and capture all emissions. And why I say capture all emissions, it's a little bit, Mark, a, a play on words because there are no emissions from our system. Like I said, it's a closed loop system. The exhaust of the turbo expander, right? We have a combustor that burns pure oxygen with natural gas in a CO2 stream, in a closed loop CO2 stream. And we sustain that combustion and we get the energy out of a turbo expander, right? It turns a generator and generates electricity. But the exhaust of the turbo expander is not in a stack or an emission or an exhaust pipe. Rather, it's in a discharge pipe that goes through a heat exchanger. We dewater, we dewater that CO2 and we heat it back up and we put it back into the front of the combustor, a closed loop system. Now, there are probably three engineers in my audience who actually understood uh, all of that explanation. So let, let's let's dumb this down a little bit for, for folks like me. So, I mean, you use oxygen and natural gas, you burn them together, you create, I mean, there are, there, there are emissions, there is an exhaust, but then you put that into some, a closed loop system. And at some point in there, the, the CO2 and other, uh, other emissions are then uh, taken off and, and transported by pipeline uh, to an underground storage facility? Yeah, let's, let's be clear. There are no other emissions. In our technology, because we do oxycombustion, pure oxygen with natural gas only creates CO2 and water. So there's no SOX, there's no NOx, number one. Gotcha. Okay. The only byproduct is CO2 and water. And because we're burning oxygen and natural gas, we create CO2. So while we generate electricity, we also, in our closed loop system, generate clean pipeline quality CO2. And that CO2, like you said, is, is to be uh, then transported and used sequestration uh, to be captured. We like to think of our system, Markham, as recycling carbon. We take fossil fuels out in the form of natural gas, we extract the power and energy out of them in clean power generation, and we take the and, and we sell the power, and we take the CO two and we sequester it back underground. What are the economics of a project like this, Ron? Uh, uh, often, um, you know, CCS when it's bolted onto uh, onto either a power plant or some other kind of a plant is considered very expensive. Uh, so. Does your system get around that? I mean, is it's, it, you're building it all from uh, as you're designing it from the ground up. You're integrating the CCS into the into the system. Does that make it economic? Yeah, the 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 fact that we produce multiple revenue streams is what makes it such that net power plants at utility scale we expect to be able to compete on a level playing field with 
see, uh, with combined cycle plants that have carbon capture installed on the back end. Now recognize they have a large capital expense in installing back end controls. They also have an O&M expense going forward on that. So, so back end controls, and yet they still only capture 80 to 90% of the emissions, the CO2, still have to deal with the NOx and the SOx, right? We take a technology that closed loop captures all the emissions, so we get to sell our electricity. We also, this is why we use levelized cost of electricity basis for comparisons. We also sell CO2. Uh, there is a CO2 market, as you know, an industrial CO2 market in, in, uh, in many industrialized countries. And in the United States domestically, there's over 5,000 miles of CO2 pipeline system. So, so we believe that there's a market for CO2 as well as for electricity. And it's in that those dual revenue streams that we can compete head to head with uh, the most efficient combined cycle units. Ron, what is the market for CO2 down in Odessa, Texas? I mean, that I've been down there, worked down there. That's an oil town. It's got that would be like the you know the Red Deer of of Alberta, Canada. Uh, where is the the market for CO2 there? Yeah, the the CO2 market. And I'm not I'm a power generation guy from my history, so I'm not as familiar in in the space. But the CO2 market is fairly robust in Texas. It's used for various industrial uh, re requirements and needs. There's a great deal of need for CO2 in industry. It's used as well in many um, in many energy spaces for enhanced oil recovery. Uh, and it's, you know, the, the CO2 is kind of dual purpose there. It's sequestered and stored properly, but also provides for another economic benefit in some regions, in some places. Okay. And when are you going to have this project up and running, Ron? Yeah. So the serial number one of this utility scale system, which is upscaled from our Laporte demonstration site, where we prove the technology. Uh, after proof of the technology in Laporte, we partnered with Baker Hughes and uh, more specifically their subsidiary, Nuvo Pignoni, uh, to bring to market both industrial scale, smaller systems and utility scale, 300 megawatt electric uh, power generation systems. The first that we'll install is in West Texas in Odessa. And we'll do that at an Oxy. Oxy Petroleum is uh, an Oxy Low Carbon Ventures uh, are one of our investors, one of our shareholders, one of the groups that's been ahead of how do we clean, you know, use power cleanly and, and sequester the carbon. And so they, they're a big investor of ours, number one. And number two, they're going to host this new plant at their site. We expect to do start construction in 24. 23 will be mostly completion of engineering work and some minimal site work and, and interconnect work and, and permanent work and such. Uh, but 24 will start construction and expect to be COD operating by the end of 26. What about the natural gas that goes into the plant? That's the feedstock for, for the plant, Ron. Uh, um, what kind of, what's the, the methane uh, leakage rate uh, from your uh, gas suppliers? Yeah, it's a good it's a good question, Markham. We don't we have not sourced the gas supply yet uh, for for our site, but we do intend to use as best we can res responsibly sourced gas. It's a big it's a big area that the energy providers are really starting to pay attention to, and we've had some strategic interest from from players that can provide for and have the you know kind of. Uh, the, the are the leading edge in responsibly sourced gas uh, come, come and, and want to partner with us, recognizing that the end game is what? The end game is decarbonization. The end game is making sure that we've got a clean energy environment while still using the abundant and, and now clean resource of natural gas to power the world. Ron, uh, final question. I'm not sure if you can answer this or not, but uh, uh, what is likely to be your levelized cost of energy? Uh, on, I'll say like on a megawatt hour basis. Yeah, we're, we we, tar we target nth of a kind, and I say nth of a kind, meaning we get through some of the of the early learnings. We're going to design these plants 
to be installed in a modular way. They're very small in terms of footprint because of the great power density of CO2 as a working fluid. We can make the footprint of these plants small and therefore really modularize their design and minimize, you know, minimize cost schedule and, and, and facilitate global deployment. But we believe, like I said, we'll be competitive with combined cycle with back end controls. We're normally in the twenty five to forty dollars per megawatt hour range. Well, Ron, good luck with your project. Thank you very much for this. Markham, thank you very much. We appreciate your interest.